reaches into space. And brings home a precious piece of another heavenly body. He records his achievement and stores it in fathomless recesses of instantaneous recall and completes another cycle in his search for knowledge. Throughout all of man's endeavors, his curiosity, imagination, and determination have produced the technology to succeed. And the single most important ingredient of that success, the common denominator of all his technological progress, has been research. The explosive expansion of man and his works is reflected in the increasing amount of traffic on our roads. We are living longer, working less, and playing more than any time in our history. As our capacity for economic and industrial development grows, our lives grow more dependent on transportation of goods and services and transportation of people to their various destinations safely, efficiently, quickly. The highway is the keystone of this transportation system. Research into the triumvirate problems of highway, vehicle, and man himself is providing knowledge that will enable us to keep pace with our evolution. And when you realize that technology doubles itself every 10 years, you quickly begin to appreciate why this research is so essential and how much it has accomplished in the last 50 years. The challenge of the next 50 years is facing us today. Projecting just to the year 1980, our population is expected to reach 250 million. Automobile registrations are predicted to top 130 million, with 50% more traffic than there is today. Clearly, research will have to provide dramatic new breakthroughs in construction techniques and environmental understanding to see us through the turn of the century. Fortunately, some very meaningful research is in progress now. Experiments with mass movement of Earth through red sod, repetitive explosion device for soil displacement, to quickly clear land for highway construction with careful concern for control of erosion. Highway engineers are being aided by space-age technology such as sonic and ultrasonic mixing devices that economically improve pavement strength using only a fraction of the materials normally required. New pavement designs are ensuring longer lasting roads with safer, smoother riding qualities. And in highway planning, unique ideas are being employed. This is an optical electronic system which allows the guidance of a television or motion picture camera through a three-dimensional model of a highway and its environment. The simulation gives designers an advanced look at how well a planned facility will meet specifications, and it provides an opportunity for adjustments to be made before actual construction begins, eliminating costly corrections on the job. Students in design and engineering professions are using the simulator to evaluate and develop new ideas. Another system that takes the guesswork out of highway planning is the computer-produced perspective sketch, a highway drawn by a computer. Information on technical specifications, landscaping, traffic loads, guardrail design, roadside development, lighting, Almost anything to do with the highway is programmed into the computer, which correlates the information and produces a sketch from any desired point of view. A permanent record of just how that highway would look if constructed under this set of design characteristics. The community alongside the highway is also important to researchers. What you are seeing is a view of a proposed shopping center filmed with a lens no larger than the eye of a needle. The lens is walking through the model to show what it looks like from the pedestrian point of view. 
This project is designed to help solve environment-oriented problems before they can occur. Highway safety is an active area of research. Investigators note that a great number of serious automobile accidents occur on the open road and are one-car collisions with an obstacle in the vicinity of the road. A guardrail or median barrier, light pole or road sign. Guardrails and median barriers are intended to protect the motorist from road hazards, but they can cause more damage than they prevent. Full-scale impact testing of guardrail systems is resulting in valuable information on their capabilities, helping to produce better designs that will save lives and reduce property damage. As a result of research, slip base supports are now in use that allow light poles and signs to break away on impact, significantly reducing the severity of the crash. Signs have been, and for a long time will probably be, the most effective way of communicating with drivers. And the breakaway sign is a major breakthrough in this area. But imagine how safe a sign would be if it were an object with no mass just hanging in the air. It is now technically feasible to project images in midair without a screen or cloud for a projection surface and with no need for special glasses or other apparatus for the viewer. This remarkable discovery is called holography and this is a laboratory experiment with a holosign. The image is generated by the shaping of light waves transmitted through a hologram diffraction device. The X appears to be seven feet in front of the hologram as the camera focuses first on the X and then on the transmitting device. You can readily see there is a space differential. The paper represents where the image is. The X is in sharp focus at its exact position in space. The physical location of the hologram and holosign sign is fixed. The motion of the observer causes the holosign sign to change in correspondence with the observer's position. For highway application, the transmitter would be placed well off the road. The motorist would see the sign as long as he was in line with it. Holosigns signs are a whole new medium of communication with the driver, capable of presenting information in the same format as present signs with the advantage that physically it isn't really there. Anyone who is driven at night knows the apprehension and fatigue caused by poor road visibility. These conditions are compounded when it's raining. A new reflectorized pavement marker has been developed, about four inches in diameter, placed in 40-foot intervals like pancakes and sprinkled with highly reflective glass beads. The markers provide greatly improved visibility. Other experiments in roadway lighting, headlight glare reduction, and rear lighting systems should lead to improved nighttime driver performance. Performance, from the standpoint of hardware, the components of the vehicle itself is undergoing rigid testing. Here, safety and dependability are the objectives of successful research. Industry, government, and university research teams are accelerating their programs to produce new standards of safety. But no matter how safe the highway or how safely equipped the automobile, it's often the driver himself who determines his fate on the road. 
Research utilizing the driving simulation laboratory is helping establish relationships between driver characteristics and actual driving behavior. The simulator is a projection room in which an automobile is driven on a standard chassis dynamometer while the driver views the road scene projected on a screen. Variable speed projectors are mounted on a turntable in the projection booth. The apparent travel speed is controlled by the driver. When he steps on the gas, the speed of the film projector increases. The driver responds to programmed visual presentations and his reactions, steering wheel movements, change of speed, braking response, are recorded and analyzed. His ability to react in emergency situations and perform auxiliary tasks while driving are also computed. In close cooperation with the traffic courts, drunk driving offenders are being tested at various blood alcohol levels. Statistics show that one to four percent of drivers on our roads are under the influence of alcohol. This tiny minority causes over half the accidents that involve fatalities. Studies have shown that all individuals with a blood alcohol concentration above 0.10 have impaired driving ability. The decisive factor is not only the driver's skill while under the influence, but also his judgment of the traffic situation. Research usefulness of the driving simulation lab has been increased with the addition of a closed circuit TV display and an animated model road landscape. The road is driven by the subject in the test vehicle as he views the image on his monitor. This system is also developing new data on variables affecting speeding, passing, and the effectiveness of traffic control devices. So far, we've been talking about the highway, automobile and motorist as they affect the individual. The other side of the coin is their overall influence on the community and society as a whole. What happens, for instance, in an urban environment when it becomes necessary to disrupt people from their homes in order to build a new freeway? The Los Angeles community of Watts has suffered a slow economic comeback since the riots of 1965. A number of programs for community improvement have been submitted and rejected by the community itself because they suspiciously regarded them as an attempt to break up Watts and scatter its residents to other parts of the city. In the face of this, reports supervising right-of-way agent Stuart Hill, the California Division of Highways needed acceptance and support of the proposed Century Freeway, which would run right through Watts. 2,600 housing units would have to be displaced, single-family dwellings with fenced yards, privacy, gardens, an apartment complex might easily substitute for the functional utility of the homes, but it would never have the same dignity, meaning, and comfort. Replacement housing proved to be the key, and community involvement in the plan was the solution. Houses acquired by the Division of Highways and other public agencies were moved and rehabilitated, utilizing the skills of the residents themselves. Stuart Hill. It's another thing entirely for the agency to act kind of as a guardian for the people in a program where they develop, plan, and construct housing of their own, determine what sites we're going to select, what kinds of housing we should use, and where we should put it. And this is essentially the program we're involved in in Watts. The Century Freeway through Watts could have been planned without regard to the impact on the people of the community but it wasn't. And it could prove to be a model for other highway planners and engineers who can make their plans more responsive to the needs of society by becoming involved in the community and its development. The 1970 census showed an increased population migration from urban areas to the suburbs. That surprised some people. Certainly not the commuter who's been battling to get to and from work every day, and not the Sunday driver who's noticed that it takes longer and longer to get out to the country. The urban areas are still growing, of course, and the suburbs, so that transportation problems within the urban areas are much more complex and sophisticated. 
It used to be you wondered where you were going to park the car once you arrived in the city. Now in a few places, one can park and ride rapid transit downtown. Frequently, the question then becomes how to get around once you do arrive. An experiment in Mansfield, Ohio, may prove an innovation in this respect. The prototype of a fleet of 15 passenger air-conditioned minibuses. It's called Dial-A-Ride. A customer telephones the Dial-A-Ride control center, where a computer determines which bus can give the customer the best service. The computer communicates with the bus, advising the driver to pick up the customer. The driver then deviates from the fixed route to the caller's residence, and then returns to his route and continues to his destination. The customer may alight anywhere on the route or at the downtown terminal point and request doorstep drop-off on the return trip. Because of the apparent success of the first phase of this experiment, more equipment is scheduled to be added for expanded service. Other ideas, such as separate express lanes for non-stop travel between major urban areas, and freeway monitoring systems that help control congestion are working to alleviate major traffic problems. And an interesting new computer-controlled merging system has been introduced. It's designed to aid the driver on the entrance ramp to find an acceptable gap in the traffic, even though he may not yet be able to see it. Sensing units embedded in the freeway and entrance ramp indicate to a computer how many cars there are on the entrance ramp and the status of gaps in the merging lane. The computer passes this information along to the ramp driver with a series of lights. By following a moving green pacer light as it travels along the ramp, the driver arrives at the end of the ramp in good position to merge safely into traffic. Researchers using computer technology have come up with an idea that may allow the motorist of the future to throw away his roadmap and receive all his directions from an electronic route guidance system. The driver tells the system where he wants to go. This information is transmitted to a receiving station where the route is instantly tabulated and relayed back to the vehicle by short-range radio from alongside the road. If the driver makes a mistake, the computer corrects it and the motorist is back on course. These systems are too expensive for immediate widespread use, but through research, we're learning about them and pointing the way for the future. With advanced designs like this today, it's hard to imagine what our transportation system, roads and vehicles, will be like in another 30 years. There has been a tremendous increase in research effort, and we've only touched on a few activities in this film. The computer capability of the Highway Research Board's Transportation Research Information Service is keeping track and disseminating the wealth of information we already have, plus the broad spectrum of knowledge that is accumulating through continuing research. Additionally, every year, over 3,000 representatives attend the annual meeting of the Highway Research Board in Washington, D.C. A week-long convention with committee meetings and seminars to exchange useful information in the field of highway transportation. Traditionally, the Highway Research Board, a unit of the National Academy of Sciences, acts as a catalyst to bring together the voluntary talents of outstanding minds in state highway departments, federal agencies, state and local governments, universities, industry, consulting firms, and other transportation-oriented organizations. The delegates at this convention are motivated by the certainty that research is finding a better way of doing things. You who have been concerned with serving the nation with respect to its transportation problems in these last decades know that the last decade has been a period of questioning, of scrutiny, of criticism, and of painful adjustment. In all likelihood, the review of public policy for transportation which we have gone through has been more intense during this period than at any other period in our nation's history. And that's not improper, it's not wrong, it was seriously required, particularly when one recognizes that one way or another transportation 
accounts for about 20% of our GNP, and it's very closely tied to practically every aspect of our society. <laughs> No one can dispute the fact that a great deal more highway research is needed. But research alone is not the answer. Widespread new construction is necessary to complete our interstate and update our primary and secondary road systems. To be economically feasible, roads constructed now must last a generation or more. The highways of the year 2000 are already on the drawing boards. Coupled with the need for better roads, is the necessity to master our environmental problems. The immediate effects of air pollution are readily apparent. Reduced visibility, irritation of the eyes, nose, and throat. The long-range effect on the human race can only be surmised. Test animals subjected to high levels of polluted air have shown adverse physiological effects. It is a fact that today's late model cars with control devices are much lower smog emitters than the cars of 10 years ago. But there are more cars on the road than 10 years ago. A number of research and development projects underway in the automotive and petroleum industry continue to search for better control systems. An engine with low emission characteristics and a fuel with less pollutants. Just as water and air pollution are a threat to our health, uncontrolled noise, the tension and distraction it produces, can seriously affect us mentally and physically. Noise abatement is an area of growing concern to ecologists and researchers alike. One of the biggest problems facing the next generation is the population explosion and the subsequent scarcity of land space. Tomorrow, multiple use of land within highway rights of way for service facilities, rest areas, and recreational sites will be the direct result of proper planning today. Better highway transportation tomorrow is dependent on how much we accomplish in research now. That was a truism even when the Highway Research Board was formed a half century ago. forward.